Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Doc and Queenie Bible Trivia. We are thrilled that you are with us tonight, and it is December 23rd. So guess what's coming up? Hello. And I don't know if anybody has been out today and running errands. Good luck with that. Last minute shopping, last minute groceries, whatever that looks like for you. Most of the places I went today, they were a little cray cray. So hopefully you have the loose ends for your celebration already tied up, ready to go. And it is a very exciting time. If you are in the Kansas City area, Midwest-ish, I am thrilled beyond thrilled that our weather is so amazing because that's not how it oftentimes is in the Kansas City area, December-ish. And I always check the 10-day forecast and uh, things are still looking good as far as 30s, 40s, 50s, right around there. I think there might be a 60 thrown in or maybe two sunshine. And I am super thrilled about that. All the people traveling, et cetera, it makes it so much easier when the weather is perfect. So for those of you who love SNOW, I am not a fan of that. But if you are, I hope it will come your way as long as you don't live in Kansas City. <laughs> So let's think about that. But honestly, um, this has been a very unusual December, but I am thrilled for all the people traveling. So uh, again, if that's you, be safe on the roads, have fun with your families or your friends or whoever you're going to be hanging out with. And do stay tuned to, I, I listen to a lot of preachers uh, on TV, certainly, and certainly on YouTube. So uh, that keeps me going, if you will. And speaking of that, one of the preachers that I listened to today um, actually was reading in Romans 8, and it was very impactful for me. So I thought we would start tonight with Romans chapter 8. So let's get going. This will be Bible trivia style. All righty, take the quiz. Sounds like there is none of this to them that are in Christ Jesus. Mercy, endurance, love, condemnation. There is none of this to them that are in Christ Jesus. Mercy, endurance, love, condemnation. Well, hello, Miss Sherry Berger. <laughs> How awesome to have you with us tonight. And it looks like Facebook user says condemnation. Let's see if that is correct. All right. Condemnation is, of course, the correct answer. That's Romans 8.1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So great job. Condemnation it is. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from this. Gluttony, tribulations, the law of sin and death, signs and wonders. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from this. Gluttony, tribulations, the law of sin and death, signs and wonders. I'll give you a few seconds to chime in if you know the answer. Law of sin and death it is. Romans 8, 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Excellent job. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is sickness, a fearful thing, hope and fear, life and peace. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is sickness, a fearful thing, hope and fear, life and peace.
there's always a delay on these things. And I always apologize a million percent for that. Not that I can fix it, that's for sure. But let's see what happens. All right. Donna and Calvin are in the house with us. Hallelujah and welcome, my friends. We hope your Christmas is spectacular. Sherry, I know yours will be as soon as all this delivery stuff with Kevin gets done, right? All right, this is Romans 8, 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Great job, my friends. They that are led by the Spirit shall die by the Spirit, shall fall by the sword, are the sons of God, are on the stairway to heaven. They that are led by the Spirit shall die by the Spirit, shall fall by the sword, are the sons of God, are in the stairway to heaven. What do you think is the right answer here? Type, type, typing, I know you are. They that are led by the Spirit, this is Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Great job, Donna and Calvin. We do not know what we should pray, but intercession is made with groaning that cannot be uttered by angels, the saints in heaven, the devil, or the Spirit. We do not know what we should pray, but intercession is made with groaning that cannot be uttered by angels, the saints in heaven, the devil, or the spirit. I hate to always give the answers until you guys have given it a shot. This is Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself make intersection, intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Spirit it is. All things work this way for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Lucky for good, for evil, distinctively. All things work this way for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Lucky for good, for evil, distinctively. Good it is. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So good it is. The question is asked, if God be for us, who shall be against us? Can we stand? Who can number us? Can we be made worthy? The question is asked, who, if God be for us, who can be against us? Can we stand? What can number us? Or can we be made worthy? If God be for us. Perfect. Romans 8.31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who? can be against us. Pretty powerful passage right there for sure. He is at the right hand of God making intercession for us. David, Moses, Christ, Jude. He is at the right hand of God making intercession for us. David, Moses, Christ, or Jude. I bet you guys know this one right off the bat. Romans 8.34, who is he that condemns? 
It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God the Father, who also make intercession for us. Romans 8.34, and the answer, of course, is Christ. In tribulation, distress, and peril, we are, as dogs, more than conquerors, more miserable than all men, as a worm. In tribulation, distress, and peril, we are, as dogs, more than conquerors, more miserable than all men, as a worm. You guys are doing so great. Nice, fast typing there, Calvin. All right, this is Romans 8, 35, and actually 36 pulls it up as well. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. More than conquerors it is. Neither death, life, angels, principalities, nor powers can separate us from this. The law, the love of God, our vision, or sin. Neither death, life, angels, principalities, nor powers can separate us from this. The law, the love of God, our vision, or sin. This will be in Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come nor height, nor depth, not any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So if you had love of God, you were correct. All right, we'd like to welcome you tonight to Doc and Queenie Bible Trivia. We are thrilled that you're joining us tonight. I know it's tis the season and busy, busy, busy as everybody always is, but let's kick it down a notch and relax and absorb the word. Tonight we are reading in Romans and we just completed chapter eight. So now we're going to go on to chapter nine. So this will be Romans nine, Bible trivia style. Paul said he has this in his heart. Goodness, mercy, hatred, sorrow. Paul said he has this in his heart. Goodness, Mercy, hatred, sorrow. There you go. I, do, I always like to wait. <laughs> Good job. This is Romans 9, 2. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Sorrow it is. Paul has a concern for these people. The Israelites the Greeks, the Philistines, the Egyptians. Paul has a concern for these people. The Israelites, the Greeks, the Philistines, the Egyptians. Calvin, this is going to be a little more typing for you with these names. Israelites, Greeks, Philistines, or Egyptians, right? We are so glad that you guys are joining us tonight for sure. There you go. All right. Romans 9, 3 and 4. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Who are Israelites to whom pertain the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law? and the services of God, and the promises. Israelites, it is. 
They which are the children of the flesh are not with sin, condemned, children of God, children of malice. They which are the children of the flesh are not with sin, condemned, children of God, children of malice. What do you think? Typing, typing, typing. All right, this is Romans 9, chapter uh, chapter 9, verse 8. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. The answer in this case is children of God, Romans 9, 8. The promise was that this woman would have a son, Eve, Sarah, Elizabeth, Diana. The promise was that this woman would have a son, Eve, Sarah, Elizabeth, or Diana. All right, Sarah, it is Romans 9, 9. For this is the word of promise. At this time I will come and Sarah will have a son. This woman conceived a son by Isaac. Tamara, Rebecca, Rachel, Mary. This woman conceived a son by Isaac. Tamara, Rebecca, Rachel, Mary. These are a little easier, I think, to type in there, Calvin. All right, this is Romans 9.10. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. Rebecca, it is. It is written, Jacob have I loved, but this man I have hated. Pharaoh, Esau, Joseph, Isaac. It is written, Jacob have I loved, but this man I have hated. Pharaoh, Esau, Joseph, Isaac. Who has he hated? This is Romans chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Esau it is. God spoke to this man saying, I will have mercy upon whom I have mercy. Moses, David, Saul, Solomon. God spoke to this man saying, I will have mercy upon whom I have mercy. Moses, David, Saul, or Solomon. This is Romans 9 verse 13. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And yes, the answer is Moses. God raised this man up so this name would be proclaimed throughout the earth. Saul, Pharaoh, John, Peter. God raised the man up so this name would be proclaimed throughout the earth. Saul, Pharaoh, John, Peter. I saw that you were doing uh, like autocorrect for Esau, Calvin. <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay, I didn't want to. Answer without you. All right, here we are. 
And this is Romans 9, uh, verse 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout the earth. The answer, of course, is Pharaoh. The question is asked, does not the potter have power over this? The day, the clay, sin, or his own mind? The question is asked, does not the potter have power over this? The day, the clay, sin, or his own mind? Let's see what you mean by that, huh? You wrote down play, but I imagine you mean clay, right? Let's try that. <laughs> the clay. All right. Romans 9, verse 21. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? So, yes, the answer is clay. It is written, I, I laid this in Zion, and whosoever believeth on him will not be ashamed. A sure foundation, a stumbling stone, a fountain of life, or a transgressor. It is written, I lay this in Zion, and whoever believeth on him will not be ashamed. A sure foundation, a stumbling stone, a fountain of life, a transgressor. Romans 9, verse 33. As it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whomsoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Fantastic and great job, Calvin and Donna. Welcome tonight. Merry Christmas, certainly to both of you and all of our faithful friends on purpose in the Doc and Queenie community. We're thrilled that you could be with us tonight, either live with Donna and Calvin or certainly on the replay. We keep this obviously on our Facebook group page, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Doc and Queenie. And you can find all of those and certainly on uh, the YouTube channel, Kathy Weaver KC, and you can find them in a playlist. So all of our Bible trivia that we've been doing for almost one year, all of our episodes are on the playlist for Kathy Weaver KC playlist on YouTube. All right, we just completed chapter nine. Let's rock it and go to chapter 10 in the book of Romans. Let's go. Paul said his desire for Israel is they might be annihilated saved, blessed, or cursed. Paul said his desire for Israel is they might be annihilated, saved, blessed, or cursed. This is Romans 10 verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Israel has a zeal of God, but not according to this. The law, the scriptures, knowledge, sincerity. Israel has a zeal of God, but not according to this. The law, the scriptures, knowledge, sincerity. Romans 10 verse 2 for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God but not according to knowledge great job my friends they were trying to establish their own name riches nation righteousness they were trying to establish their own name Riches, nation, or righteousness? Calvin, I know you have a lot of typing to do, but are you, um, and Donna in Georgia, I can't remember 
um, Tennessee, Mississippi. I wasn't sure what state you are in right now. So if you can type that in, that would be great also. This is Romans 10, verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Righteousness it is. This man described the righteousness which is of the law by saying, the man which doeth these things shall live by them. Moses, Solomon, Jonah, or Noah. This man described the righteousness which of is of the law by saying, the man which doeth these things shall live by them. Moses, Solomon, Jonah, or Noah. Romans 10 verse 5, For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Georgia, awesome. If you will confess him and believe God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus, Elijah, Elisha, Lazarus. If you confess him and believe God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus, Elijah, Elisha, or Lazarus. I have a feeling we all know this answer. This is Romans 10 verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Jesus, it is. For with this man believes unto righteousness, his mind, his heart, his intellect, his disobedience. For with this man believes unto righteousness, his mind, his heart, his intellect, his disobedience. All right, this is Romans 10.10. 10. For with the heart of man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. His heart is the right answer. With the mouth confession is made unto Salvation, predestination, the likeness of God, or the world. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, predestination, the likeness of God, or the world. There we go. <laughs> I didn't want to go on without you. All right. There we go. All right. This is Romans 10, 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Salvation, of course, is the right answer. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord is weak is strong, is foolish, shall be saved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord is weak, is strong, is foolish, or shall be saved. This is Romans 10 verse 13. For whoever, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Speaking of them that preach the gospel, the scripture says how beautiful is their home, a walk for the Lord, are their feet 
rivers shall flow upon them. Speaking of them that preach the gospel, the scripture says how beautiful is their home, a walk for the Lord, are their feet, rivers shall flow upon them. if we can multitask here. All right. Romans 10, 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? How beautiful all the, are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. The feet it is. This comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Sin, joy, faith or tolerance. This comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, sin, joy, faith, or tolerance. All right, this is Romans 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. All right, my friends, that completes Romans chapter 10. Not only uh, are we thrilled to have you with us tonight on Doc and Queenie Bible Trivia, but we are just thrilled with the fact that you get so many answers so fast, even with the internet issues that we always have. But we are thrilled, thrilled, thrilled that you are helping us with all of our Bible trivia answers, which is amazingly awesome as well. So thank you all for joining us tonight live on Doc and Queenie Bible Trivia or on the replay. Certainly don't forget, it always is in our Facebook uh, group page, but certainly on uh, my playlist for Kathy Weaver KC on YouTube. All right. If you and Donna are ready, Calvin, we will start with Romans chapter 11. Paul said he is of the seed of Adam, Noah, Abraham, Joseph. Paul said he is of the seed of Adam, Noah, Abraham, Joseph. This is Romans 11 verse 1. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Abraham it is. God has not done this to his people. Delivered, guided, cast away, separated. God has not done this to his people. Delivered, guided, cast away, separated. Romans 11, verse 2, God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Wot ye not what the scripture saith to Eli uh, Elias? He, now he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying. Romans 11, 2, and of course the answer is cast away. The people had done this to God's prophets, protected, killed, worshipped, obeyed. The people had done this to God's prophets, protected, killed, worshipped, obeyed. Good evening, Miss Debbie, and welcome to Dark and Queenie Bible Trivia. We love when you pop on with us. How are you? I'm doing good. Nice Fantastic. to see you. It's nice to see you. Donna and Calvin are with us tonight. 
So we certainly love that. And they're doing fantastic with the answers. So it's been a very fun Bible trivia so far. Right now we are in Romans chapter 11. All right. Great job. Killed is the answer. Romans 11, 3. Lord, they have killed thy prophets and digged down thine altars. And I am left alone and they seek my life. Killed it is. I will let you get settled unless you're already in Romans, are you? I am. Wow. You are speed, speed, speed. <laughs> All right. God told Elias. He had this many men who say who served him and not bowed to Saul. 700, 1200, 5000 or 7000. God told Elias he had this many men who served him and not bowed to Saul. 700, 1200, 5000 or 7000. Yeah, Calvin is just typing like cray cray and they are in Georgia, actually. So I was checking to see how everything is going in Georgia since the weather in Kansas City has been spectacular. Yeah, it's coming through quickly. So that's nice. Absolutely. All right. This is Romans uh, eleven four. Did you find that? I do. OK, go ahead. But what was God's reply to him? I have left 7000 men for myself who have not bowed down to Baal. 7,000 it is. It is written that God has given them the spirit of this, that their eyes should not see, nor their ears hear. Deceit, confusion, sorrow, slumber. It is written that God has given them the spirit of this, that their eyes should not see, nor their ears hear. It's always interesting to see what the delay is. There we go. There it is. Okay, well, mine says, uh, verse 8, as it is written, God gave them a spirit of insensitivity, eyes that cannot see, and ears that cannot hear to this day. Oh, sensitivity. Okay, and this one, of course, says slumber. So there we go. <laughs> but that was the right verse. We got it. Paul said, he is the apostle out of season of the Gentiles that weeps highly favored of God. Paul said he is the apostle out of season of the Gentiles that weeps highly favored of God. Is this verse 11? Uh, actually, this one says 13. Okay. See, now I am speaking to you Gentiles in view of the fact that I am an apostle, apostle to the Gentiles. I magnify my ministry. This one says office. I like ministry better. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. All right. If this be holy, so are the branches. The sun, the root the pit, the flower. If this be holy, so are the branches, the sun, the root, the pit, or the flower. Verse 16. Uh -huh. Now, if the first fruits offered up are holy, so is the whole batch. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. Root it is. God is able to graft branches into this kind of tree. Elm, oak, olive, sycamore. God is able to graft branches into this kind of tree. Elm, oak, olive, or sycamore.
this actually has 23 and 24 if yours does. Okay. I was like, this is jumping a bit. <laughs> okay. And even they, if they do not remain in unbelief, will be grafted in because God has the power to graft them in again. For if you were cut off from your native olive, native wild olive and against nature were grafted into a cultured olive tree, how much more will these the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? That is so absolutely awesome. Talk about miracles every day, you know? Yeah. All right. The gifts and calling of God are without this. Love, mercy, repentance, likeness. The gifts and calling of God are without this. Love, mercy, repentance, likeness. Hmm. Okay. Verse, uh, the answer is in verse 29. Does it say to do 28 and 29? Or um, just, just 29 for this, yeah. Okay. Since God's gracious gifts and calling are irrevocable. So repentance. 29 it is. God's judgments are unfair as man's, unsearchable, unmerciful. God's judgments are unfair as man's, unsearchable, unmerciful. We've been doing pretty well, even with the Georgia, Kansas City thing. But sometimes it's just you can't <laughs> imagine what the Internet is doing. Plus, you no, know, I bet there are still people who are shopping at this time. What do you think? Oh, yeah, I, I would guess that's a good possibility. <laughs> I still have a few things that I need to do. Uh Oh, well, you're very nice to pop on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so verse 32. Uh, this actually says 33. 33. OK. Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgments and untraceable his ways. Beautiful. Unsearchable it is. All right. Once again, Donna and Calvin are just absolutely rocking Bible trivia. And we are thrilled that you've all joined us tonight on Doc and Queenie Bible Trivia. We're thrilled to have uh, Debbie Miller with us tonight. And again, it's so amazing that we are able to reach across the globe, seriously, across the nation. And to have you with us every single week is just such a blessing. And Debbie, I'm thrilled you could be with us tonight. Thanks for asking. I'm Absolutely. Oh, but I just wanted to mention one of the verses that we talked about just a bit ago. Uh -huh. I was just uh, reading an article by someone, a Jewish person who lives in Israel. And um, they had been reading all these uh, scriptures um, in obviously the Torah um, but he's like and they read all of those scriptures and they've seen everything that's happening now and yet nobody ever sees the connection with Christ and so he was pleading you know the Jewish people pleading for them for us Christians to pray that their eyes would be opened and we just read how um, you know, their eyes are blinded and it, it continues even to today. Absolutely. This is so real. I mean, when they say the living word, this is not like just some little storybook that you put on your shelf and don't ever look at. This is the living word of God. It's it, that I, that's just amazing. Yeah. It's especially, you know, like now when we're, we're all talking about how so many things are, relative to scripture related as we watch history or being made and reading scripture, even here with the life of Christ being born and the things, um, a lot of them, I mean, obviously they weren't there, but they have repeated a lot of these same ceremonies um, and yet their eyes are blinded. Satan has them totally blinded. Yeah, the enemies at work, and we do need to stay in prayer for sure. Yep. 
All right, my friends, we are headed now for Romans chapter 12. It is your reasonable service to present this as a living sacrifice. Keep your body malice or grace. It is your reasonable service to present this as a living sacrifice. Sheep, your body, malice, or grace. Oh, dear. Uh, this is verse one. Yes. Am I frozen? Nope. Oh, okay. The picture is frozen. <laughs> it could be. That wouldn't surprise me, but I've got your voice, and that's that's awesome, too. Okay. <laughs> Uh, verse 1, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual worship. Body, it is. Do not be conformed to this. Mercy, the will of God, good works, or this world. Do not be conformed to this. Mercy, the will of God, good works, or this world. Beautiful. That's better. Yeah. Okay. So verse two says, do not be conformed to this age or world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. The world it is. God has dealt the measure of this to every man. Sorrow, anguish, hope, faith. God has dealt the measure of this to every man. Sorrow, anguish, hope, or faith. There you go. For by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he should think. Instead, think sensibly as God has distributed a measure of faith to each of us. Faith it is, and that's Romans 12, 3. There are many members in one of these. Family, body, club, or gang. There are many members in one of these, family, body, club, or gang. Right. Verse four says, now as we have many parts in one body and all the parts do not have the same function. Body it is. Abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is fearful, sorrowful, good, or strong. Abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is fearful, sorrowful, good, strong. Verse 9, uh -huh. love must be without hypocrisy, detest evil, cling to what is good. Good it is. In tribulation, be weary, careful, hopeful, patient. In tribulation, be weary, careful, hopeful, or patient. My version has rejoicing in it. I absolutely love that word. Okay, which verse? Oh, this is verse 12. Okay, yeah. Rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, be persistent in prayer. Uh, rejoice it is. Uh, patient actually is the answer. Do this as much as it is possible for you. Fast and pray, give to widows and orphans, Give tithes, 
live peaceably with all men. Do this as much as it is possible for you. Fast and pray, give to widows and orphans, give tithes or live peaceably with all men. Verse 16. Uh, this one says 18. 18. Okay. If possible, on your part, live at peace with everyone. Wouldn't that be a lovely concept? <laughs> the Lord said this is his honor and respect, vengeance, subtlety, vision for his people. The Lord said this is his honor and respect, vengeance, subtlety, vision for his people. Verse 19 says, friends, do not avenge yourselves. Instead, leave room for his wrath, for it is written, vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. Hmm. I think about that when actually um, you see something happen or experience it even yourself. And you're just like, that isn't even fair. I can't believe that isn't even fair. How could you do that? And you're kind of thinking about what you're going to do for retaliation. And then you got to go, whoa, hang on a second. That has nothing to do with you, my friend. This has to do with God's going to handle it. Back off. Yeah. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Oh, my goodness. All we have to do is remember that he'll handle it. That's and I, have actually, I live long enough to see it happen, too. Yeah, that, that there's that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there's that part, too. All right. Do this if your enemy is hungry. Pray for him. Feed him, smite him, mock him. Do this if your enemy is hungry. Pray for him, feed him, smite him, mock him. <laughs> yeah. Verse uh, 20. Mm -hmm. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink, for in so doing, you will be heaping fiery coals on his head. Feed him. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with joy, faith, good, or lies. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with this. Joy, faith, good or lies yes verse 21 do not be conquered by evil but conquer evil with good amen all right thank you for joining us tonight on doc and queenie bible trivia we love that you are here with us live donna and calvin and we just completed Romans chapter 12. We're now headed to Romans chapter 13. Miss Debbie Miller, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. I am. All right. Let's do it. Let everyone be subject to this. The higher powers, sin, sorrow and anguish, vain babblings. Let everyone be subject to this. The higher powers, sin, Sorrow and anguish, vain babblings. This is a hard one to think of. Uh, yeah. Verse one, everyone must submit to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from God and those that exist are instituted by God. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We need to have a t-shirt made, I think. <laughs> Owe no man anything but this, a day's wages, wrath, love, or goodwill. Owe no man anything but this, a day's wages, wrath, love, goodwill. Are we at verse 7? Oh, this is eight. Yeah. Eight. Okay. Do not owe anything, anyone anything except to love one another. 
for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Love it is. I think that word's in the Bible a few times. What do you think? Yeah, I'm not quite sure how many times, but we've seen it a few. <laughs> That's for sure. He that does this fulfills the law, loves one another, good works, gives to the poor and widows, fasts and prays. He that does this fulfills the law, loves one another, good works, gives to the poor and widows, fast and prays. Are we reading nine and ten or just two? This is actually eight again. Oh, eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do not owe anything except to love one another for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Sounds like it might be a mandate to do that, huh? Well, it might be in the commandments. <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> yeah. The commandments are comprehended in the saying, thou shalt love this as thyself. Lucre, thy neighbor, thy wife, the poor and orphans. The commandments are comprehended in the saying, thou shalt love this as thyself. Lucre, thy neighbor, thy wife, the poor and orphans. So verse nine, uh -huh. the commandments do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet, and whatever other commandment, all they all are summed up by this. Love your neighbor as yourself. Neighbor it is. Love does not work this to his neighbor. Ill, kindness mercy, tenderness. Love does not work this to his neighbor. Ill, kindness, mercy, tenderness. Yeah. Verse 10, love does no wrong to a neighbor. Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of the law. Mm, peace and understanding. How about that? Mm. All right. This is the fulfilling of the law. Joy, hope, wrath, love. This is the fulfilling of the law. Joy, hope, wrath, love. Verse 10 again. Uh -huh. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of the law. Repeat it again. Love, love, love. This is nearer than we believed. Sin, the tribulation, the rapture, our salvation. This is nearer than we believed. Sin, the tribulation, the rapture, our salvation. Verse 11. Besides this, knowing the time, it is already the hour for you to wake up from sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Hmm. Hallelujah. Let us cast off the works of this loyalty, prosperity, the day, darkness. Let us cast off the works of this loyalty, prosperity, the day, or darkness. So 
darkness. There we go. Okay, verse 12. The night is nearly over and daylight is near. So let us discard the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Darkness it is. Here we go. I love this. Let us put this on. A coat of many colors, a happy face, diligence and fortitude, the armor of light. Let us put this on. A coat of many colors, a happy face, diligence and fortitude, the armor of light. Well, verse 12 said, <laughs> the night is nearly over and daylight is near. So let us discard the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Armor of light it is. Let us walk on a lonely path on the straight and narrow in the footsteps of Jesus. Honestly, let us walk on a lonely path on the straight and narrow in the footsteps of Jesus, or honestly. Many of those sound like they might actually be a good answer. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Okay, but verse 13 says, let us walk with decency as in the daylight, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and promiscuity, uh, not in quarreling or jealousy. Romans 13, verse 13. And the answer, of course, is honestly. All right, my friends, this takes us to the end of our hour. And we would like to thank you again for joining us on Doc and Queenie Bible Trivia. And we love that Donna and Calvin are able to join us from Georgia live almost every single week. I don't think they've missed many in one whole year. And Debbie, it's awesome to see you again. So how close are you ready for Christmas? Um, I'm pretty close. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's always last minute stuff to do. That's for sure. Yes. And uh, fortunately our Christmas isn't until Sunday. So Sunday evening. So I've got a little more time, but um, <laughs> I'm keeping yeah. uh, Ken busy wrapping gifts as I get them accumulated. And yeah. <laughs> That is awesome. And that really is. It sounds like a dynamic partnership you have there. Merry Christmas to you and Calvin, Donna. We're thrilled that you could be with us again tonight. Merry Christmas to you, Debbie. And again, thank you all for joining us on Doc and Queenie Bible Trivia. Thank you. And Merry Christmas, everyone. Good night now. Good night.